guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my pros and cons review of the Puma Evo Power 1. In today's video, we're going to go over the major positives, the major negatives, as well as some neutral points I have regarding this particular shoe, and hopefully allow you to make a more educated buying decision. Of course, if you enjoy the pros and cons reviews on my channel, be sure to support this video with a like, and also leave a comment down below of any other shoe you'd like to see a pros and cons review of. Also, if you would like all the details on the overall performance, you can find a link to the review page on my website where you will find the full review down below in the description of this video. So with that being said, let's get right into the review. In terms of touch, the Evo Power 1 is a true standalone and really doesn't compare to anything else currently out there on the market. I would describe the touch as a modified barefoot feel and I'll explain that in just a second. Now as you can tell this is a 100% synthetic upper. The synthetic material itself is called Adapt Light from Puma and it's very very unique in terms of how it feels on your foot and what type of touch it provides. Now you can see that the thickness of the upper is on the thinner side so because of that like I said it's going to have more of a barefoot feel but with that being said the top layer on the synthetic has a very slight plushness about it and I'm not sure if you guys can see it when I rub my finger on there but it definitely is unique and makes for almost a leather like quality to this very very thin upper. It also has the ability to stretch vertically um, which gives this shoe an incredibly natural feel. There's almost no rigidity to the upper whatsoever. It moves very naturally with your foot and has a nice sock like level of comfort and because of that really reminds me of something like Nike skin found on the Hypervenom Phantom. When you combine that soft thin Adapt Light synthetic with the AccuFoam inserts in the upper itself that run through the strike zone as well as in the toe box and forefoot area, you get another modification to that barefoot feel and that the AccuFoam pads are very, very thin, but at the same time have a unique spongy quality about them that make the shoe feel almost leather-like as opposed to very, very thin. Now, depending on how hard your touch is on the ball, for example, when you're striking, you're going to have more of a barefoot feel, but when you're making softer, more controlled touches on the ball, the softness of the foam is really going to come through in the overall touch. And like I said, it's going to have more of a leather-like, almost controlled type of feel, as opposed to more of a barefoot experience, which is what you're going to have when dribbling as well as striking the ball. Striking the ball in the Evo Power 1 feels amazing, but with that being said, it's very difficult to describe simply because there really hasn't been anything like this particular boot before. Now the design of the shoe is largely influenced by barefoot shooting mechanics, which I'm going to talk about here in just a second. Puma did some testing on their own and came to three separate conclusions that had a really big impact on the final design of the Evo Power 1. The first conclusion that they came to is that they found when striking the ball barefoot with no shoes on whatsoever, having that unrestricted flexibility to your foot where your toes would curl and your foot flexes in general, um, having that non-restrictiveness allows for an increase in power in your shots. Normally that motion would be restricted in a normal pair of soccer shoes due to the stiffness of the sole plate. But with the Evo Power 1, they intentionally made the sole plate in the forefoot area flexible, allowing it to bend backwards and move naturally with the curl of your toes. The second conclusion that they came to is again, when striking the ball barefoot, having no extra material between your foot and the ball, again made for an increase in power due to the extra responsiveness, which is why they implemented a very barefoot style very thin adapt light synthetic upper. The final conclusion that they came to is that they found that having a little bit of extra padding that you would normally get from a pair of leather soccer shoes, for example, allows for an increase in accuracy in your shots, or less, uh, at least more of a sensation of accuracy in your shots, which is why they implemented the AccuFoam pads running throughout the strike zone and top of the forefoot area in the upper itself. Now all of these elements combine for, like I mentioned, a very unique type of playing experience in terms of how these shoes feel when striking the ball. Um, it doesn't really compare to anything else. It's not your standard silhouette for a power boot. There's no rubber elements. There's no extra grip, but the feel is just very, very natural and very responsive. It's a nice clean strike on the ball. There's no interference. Nothing gets in the way. The laces are pushed ever so slightly to the side. And like I said, it just feels right. It feels very good. And that's the best way I can describe striking the ball in the Evo Power 1. If you're a fan of power boots but want to try something new, want to try something that has never been done before, this is definitely something to give a go. 
While it isn't a negative, it is something that needs to be said. Do not buy the Evo Power One with the expectation that your shots are going to become more powerful. I think that one of the more gimmicky features on this particular shoe is definitely the flexible sole plate, and it has been a really big sell selling point for the Evo Power One, but I really didn't find it to be particularly noticeable or effective when it comes to actually striking the ball. Um, while it is something that is definitely a unique design by Puma and I applaud them for any kind of innovation that they can bring to the soccer cleat market, there are shoes out there and have been for a while now with thin plastic sole plates that also have the ability to flex backwards, perhaps not as easily as the Evo Power 1, but again, it's not a super noticeable feature on this particular shoe and not something that is going to make or break your overall experience. In terms of comfort, the Evo Power 1 feels great. The synthetic material is soft, flexible, and just feels very comfortable against your foot with no break-in time required. In terms of the overall fit of the shoe, I would say it's slightly above average in width, but not definitely not excessively wide. I also found that the upper really didn't stretch all that much after wear time. So um, in terms of who this shoe will fit, as long as you don't have excessively wide feet, the Evo Power 1 should fit you just fine. In terms of sizing, normally I wear a size 9 US, but I found that going up to a 9.5 in the Evo Power 1 was most comfortable. So for the most part, I would definitely recommend going a half size up if you were interested in a pair for yourself. The all new stud pattern for the Evo Power 1, while it isn't anything outrageous, actually performs very well. You're going to find that you have four fairly narrow profile conical studs that are also pretty aggressive in length right at the tip of the toe allowing for a good push off point when accelerating for a sprint or something like that. Whereas you have these fairly large bladed studs towards the outside here which act as a very good push off point when planting for um, a strike or even just making hard lateral cuts and then the studs in the heel again make for a very stable feel overall not to mention that the extra flexibility of the sole plate allows the studs to remain under your feet at all times allowing you to have maximum traction no matter which way that your foot twists or turns so for the most part traction is definitely a strong point on the Evo Power 1. If I had one negative thing to say about the Evo Power 1, it would be in regards to the ultra thin sole plate in the forefoot area of the boot. Now keep in mind that I did not have any issues whatsoever throughout testing when it comes to stud pressure, but should you play on harder natural grass playing surfaces, I could see that down the line because of the thin sole plate and fairly long aggressive narrow profile studs, that stud pressure may be an issue, like I said, if you play on hard ground natural grass playing surfaces. If you're playing on standard firm ground or even soft ground, I don't see this being an issue whatsoever. And again, I really wanna stress that I did not have any issues with stud pressure with Evo Power One. It's just something to keep in mind if you were interested in this particular shoe. For as many features that are packed into the Evo Power One, it still maintains a very lightweight construction. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time. Keep in mind that this is a brand new pair in a size 9.5 US. We're gonna throw it on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at a very lightweight 7.4 ounces. So should you choose to go for an Evo Power One, they are most definitely not going to weigh you down. All right guys, that's it for my pros and cons review of the Evo Power One. Puma has done a really good job with this particular design. They really went back to the drawing board and designed something that is truly unique, and the performance is definitely there. It offers a fantastic feel, a great level of comfort, and a shooting experience that is unlike anything else currently out there on the market. So again, if you are interested in more details overall, be sure to check out the full written review on my website linked down below in the description. On that same review page, you're also going to find Buy It Now links with the best prices online, including exclusive SR4U coupon codes, allowing you to pick these up at a slightly discounted price. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave your comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.